Hey, welcome back to another Type 5 How-To. Today I got a crappy job for you. We're going to be replacing the float switch on an ejector pit sump pump. Uh, now, I know that this uh, sump pump float switch is bad because it's been running constantly for quite a while. And uh, you can actually test out whether it's the float switch itself or there's something wrong with the pump. Um, you'll notice here at the end of this electrical cord, we have the actual pump cord plugged into the end of the cord for the float switch. So uh, before we start disconnecting things, uh, the first thing that I wanna do is try to clean out the dirty water as much as possible from this tank. So uh, I've gone ahead and run the water and flush this toilet several times. Um, and you can actually just plug the um, you can plug the pump itself in directly just into the wall and it will spit all of that nasty water out and, and get this as clean of a job as, as possible. So uh, you'll want to make sure that you do that first. Now, if your pump has been running for an extended period of time uh, and sitting there down at the bottom, uh, it may actually be kind of hot. So make sure that you give it some time to rest before you start reaching in uh, and grabbing any parts. Uh, just one thing to, to make note of. Now, in a typical ejector pit situation, uh, we're going to have a vent pipe as well as the actual um, waste line here. And of course, since we're down in a basement, this is ejecting waste up and out past this check valve. Whatever you do, do not disconnect this check valve or uh, anything above that check valve. This is filled with dirty water. You disconnect any of that, it's all gonna come crashing down on you. Uh, but oftentimes there are uh, two uh, potential uh, quick disconnects here that we could remove if necessary. I'm actually gonna leave this one on here on that waste side and remove the one from the vent. And I marked here uh, where this clamp currently is. So as I slide it down, you can see it's just kind of a friction fit there. It's not glued in down here. And we can just wiggle this out and we'll set that to the side. All right. And now we'll have to go around and undo the bolts from the lid. I've actually already done that. And it's good to tape the lid or use a marker and mark uh, where the original position is on the lid because we don't want to spin this lid and get the pump uh, out of line with all of the rest of our connections. So uh, now that this is uh, freed up and disconnected, I'm going to go ahead and slide this lid up as high as possible uh, so that I can reach down in here and get to my actual uh, float itself. Now it goes without saying, anytime we're working around a sump pit, you want to make sure that your tools as well as any bolts or screws that you took off from the top of the lid are away from the pit. You don't want anything to fall down into that pit. Otherwise, you're going to have to vacuum out all that water and go down in there and grab it. Um, that will make a fun job even more fun. So um, we have everything set aside and you can see uh, every scenario that you run into is probably going to be a little bit different, but there are some things in common uh, for all of these pits. Um, we have the extension cord that's coming straight from the pump itself. Uh, no matter what you do, do not cut or damage this cord, okay? Uh, otherwise, you'll have to replace the whole pump. Uh, but what we want to change out is the actual float itself. Now, I can see here that this is not the first time that the float has actually gone bad. You can see the old cord uh, that is actually attached to the pump itself. There is a screw down there that you can undo and replace the um, new float in using that uh, original screw, but oftentimes they, they get you know rusted on or whatever. It's really hard to take that screw off. So that old original float switch was just cut out of the way because it's bad we don't care about that uh, but now i need to get this one off of here so it's been attached with a hose clamp 
to the side of this uh, <clears throat> waste pipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up that hose clamp. Of course, you may want an old sweater and some gloves to get your hands down in there. Uh, we'll just use a screwdriver uh, with a nut driver on it to, to get down around that hose clamp. We'll loosen that, we'll slide it up uh, so that we can work on it a little bit more. You can undo the hose clamp all the way, or you can just uh, loosen it up enough so that we can actually just cut this off, um, again, because we won't need it. And then our new float switch comes with a hose clamp that we're gonna use um, and install that. So uh, let me go ahead and remove that hose clamp. We'll slide it up. Uh, it's kind of tight here to do all that recording. So I'm gonna set this out of the way, get this up and get the new one out of the box and, and attach it. All right, so now that we got the new float switch in place, a few things that I want to point out, make sure that you uh, also double check the amount of tether or space that you need from where that uh, switch is mounted to the clamp uh, needs to be about maybe four inches or so uh, and that float needs to be pointed in such a way so that it has room to actually rise up and down with the level of the water all right you don't want that float pointed in a direction where it may get pinched off Otherwise, it's going to get stuck in a position and not work properly. So I've gone ahead and put on the new clamp, uh, attached the float to the clamp, and the hose clamp itself is in line just about to the top of the pump, essentially where the old um, float was tethered on the pump. So uh, it's about the same depth there. Uh, now. Before we go ahead and tighten everything up, uh, you want to double check that this is actually running properly. Uh, of course, the cord for the float needs to come up through the top of this lid, and I've plugged the pump back into uh, the new float switch. So we should be able to plug this into the wall, and it shouldn't currently run. Uh, but of course, make sure that None, none of those connections there are loose. Uh, but now since the float is in the off position, when I plug it in, I should not hear anything. All right, so we are plugged in and the pump is currently not running. That's a good thing. So now we're going to fill this up with water before we actually uh, reattach the lid. Um, so we can make sure that that uh, float switch does its job properly and it will cycle on and off. Again, it doesn't matter that this is currently disconnected. This is just a vent for air, uh, but we do wanna make sure that our waistline is currently tightened down uh, because it will start ejecting water out. And if you disconnected anything there, uh, you might get wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up, uh, run it a few times to make sure that float switch cycles on and off properly. And then we'll go ahead and close it up uh, and assuming that it's uh, running properly, you'll wanna make sure when you go to close it up that there is a gasket along the bottom of this lid um, and that your uh, area around the top of the actual pit is all cleaned off. Maybe take a shot vac, vacuum off that surface uh, so that when we go to tighten this lid back down, it creates a nice seal so you don't get any of those sewer gases escaping from your pit. So I'll go test it out and then we'll come back and give some final thoughts. All right, so we were able to get this pump to cycle a couple different times. I made sure that that float switch was working properly. Uh, since I'm happy with it, I've gone ahead and lowered the lid back down onto the pit and uh, we've reconnected the vent hose here. And I've also added some foam around the uh, pump and the float switches uh, extension cords as well. Uh, normally there's a grommet uh, that goes in there. I didn't have one on hand, so I'll come back and replace that later. Uh, the last thing that I wanna do is go around and tighten this lid on. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna leave it off just so that I can make sure uh, the rest of this evening that it's running properly, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I also wanted to mention here before we head out 
that um, if your pump makes a loud clanging sound every time it runs, uh, you could have a really loud check valve. Now, uh, I highly recommend one of these quiet check valves. I have one installed at my house and here at my parents' house as well. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can pick one of those up on Amazon and then you can have um, a plumber or install it yourself. Um, and it'll make a real big difference every time this pump runs so you don't get that loud banging noise. Uh, but <clears throat> hopefully you learned something here in this video. If you did, feel free to give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, so you can get more helpful tips and how-tos in the future. But that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully I'll see you all on the next one.